It is the Detroit Lions coming to town against the Dallas Cowboys this Sunday. The Lions, as of filming, a three-point favorite. That line dropped from three and a half. It'll probably fluctuate around there depending on when exactly you're watching this video. Either way, we will be live for the Cowboys versus Lions matchup. We'll go live at 2.45 p.m. Eastern time. So we'll be live a little bit extra early because... We have the stuff to talk about, and it's fun to be live extra early. Some injuries we'll be monitoring this week. Now, as a reminder, filming this on Thursday, so we'll get final word, or at least good insightful word, before we get to the video going out Sunday morning. We'll put it in the description for you guys and probably do a short on it as well. But Deron Bland, trending towards playing. Practice in full Wednesday and Thursday. Same with Kalen Carson. Same with Tyler Guyton. Eric Kendricks, though. And Nick Vigil have not practiced the first two days. Wednesday, Thursday, calf and a shoulder, a foot. If they don't go on Friday, maybe they list them as questionable still. I would be a little bit surprised if they were able to go. Now, Trayvon Diggs missed practice on Thursday, but that was just because of illness. So I actually wouldn't be that concerned about Diggs not being available on, on Sunday. I think he will play. And potentially, Cowboys have a fully healthy secondary for for the first time in a long time. Zach Martin, meanwhile, didn't practice on Thursday as he appeared on the injury with a back issue. He didn't practice Wednesday. That was just because of his normal rest. But Thursday, that back tightened up on him. Got to see what happens on Friday. If he can't go Friday, that... Mm, I mean, TJ Bass over there at right guard. All right, Micah Parsons, meanwhile, is not expected to play with an ankle injury. That is not a surprise. Maybe after the bye week against the Niners, he returns. Uh, while Kirby Joseph has a hamstring issue, seems like Frank Ragnow is going to go for the Lions, which is kind of insane because he has a partially torn pec and proved to Dan Campbell he could play by shoving him up against the wall, which is the most Dan Campbell offensive line psycho attitude statement that has ever been said. Uh, we'll see how effective he is. But it does sound like Frank Ragnow will be out there. Let's talk matchups to watch here. Number one, it is Aiden Hutchinson against the Cowboys offensive line. And there has been, I would argue, through four games that he's played in so far this season, no more impressive pass rusher in football than Aiden Hutchinson. He has six and a half sacks in four games, one game kind of the outlier. But he has a 23% pressure rate. I don't think over a four-game sample size, Micah Parsons has gotten to that figure. It is wildly impressive what Hutch has done. Here's the but. He has only faced backup offensive tackles. Now, in part because the Lions have moved him around. They don't keep him just at left end over the right tackle like the Steelers do TJ Watt. They moved him around, and they have gotten him against the weak offensive tackle and let him feast. So he will probably face plenty of Tyler Guyton uh, this week. But he'll probably get some reps against Terrence Steele as well. Got to hold up against him and help and chip and all those things because that man is going to be one of, if not the best player on the field when he's out there. He is an absolute star. So what is your confidence level in the Cowboys beating the Detroit Lions? It's been comment on today's show. So if the ad comes on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. 1 to 10 is your scale. Matchup number two to watch. The deep ball from the Detroit Lions against the Dallas Cowboys. Now, so far this season, Jared Goff has hit two deep balls all year. Both of them to Jamison Williams. And Ben Johnson is a very, very smart coach. I love him as a head coach candidate for this own team down the line if it comes to it. I would also say this. I would bet that they are going to straight up steal the Saints play action deep shot. And they're just going to say, Jameis Williams, go run a deep post, outrun everybody. So Malik Hooker, Donovan Wilson, be in the right spot this time. We'll stick with the receiving core here. It's the sun god, Amon Ross St. Brown, against Jordan Lewis. Now, I will preface this by saying, if you haven't paid attention to the offseason, you you, you, you you might have missed it. On his podcast, Amon Ross St. Brown, who is an awesome slot receiver, one of the best in, in football, and has had a very good start to the season so far as well, 
uh, said Jordan Lewis said some wild stuff to him during that Cowboys Lions game. Kind of took St. Brown to back and kind of shook him up a little bit and was surprised by it. So Cowboys media asked him uh, yesterday, "Hey, like, what'd you say to, to Amon Ross St. Brown?" And Jordan Lewis said, "I honestly don't remember what I said. Sometimes I just black out and just go somewhere else with it. But if I said anything disrespectful," I'd probably say it again. All-time quote, man. Uh, that is unbelievable in the most positive way possible. I freaking love that. Because you know what you need to be when you are an undersized nickel corner and a Mike Zimmer defense in particular? You got to be an MF and dog. And that is what Jordan Lewis is. He is tough. He is physical. He is your high-energy tone setter. You saw him get into... Uh, into um. George Pickens said, that wasn't even his guy. He wasn't even guarding Pickens that much. J. Lou has been awesome this season. Physical run support defender for a nickel. Has allowed 74 yards on 19 targets all year. That number is going to go up against Amon Ra, St. Brown. But it will be a critical matchup for the Cowboys to win. Now, today's show is made possible by Prize Picks. It is the best place to get real money sports action. Over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings. Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. It is available in over 30 states, including California, Florida, Georgia, and Texas. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. You can also do their flex play. I love the flex play. You pick two out of three. That way, in case you get one wrong, you still come out on top. Also got injury insurance. If somebody goes down, you are okay. Caleb Williams, more than passing yards. Darnell Mooney's been off to a very hot, hot start Excuse me, uh, so far this season. I also really like the Tony Pollard uh, more than line because the Colts' defense is, is bad against the run, and he's coming off a pretty good game too. Go to pricepicks.com slash CLNS. Get 50 bucks instantly when you play five. You don't even need to win to get the 50-buck bonus. It is guaranteed. It's prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS to get 50 bucks instantly when you play five. Number four matchup. It is CeeDee Lamb against the second half and the defenses in the second half he has faced. This is a pretty startling stat you're about to see on screen. CeeDee Lamb in the first half of football games this year has 25 targets for... 335 yards, two touchdowns on 21 catches. Now, if you prorate that out over a 17-game uh, season so far, you do divide it by five times two times the 17 you're going to get. He's on pace for over 2,000 yards in the first half alone. In fact, it's like 2,400 or something. In the second half of games this year, He's caught just four of 16 targets for 25 yards. And there's multiple things at play there. The quarterback's missed throws. Lamb hasn't always done the right route. He's had some drops. The scheme has not been very good for him. And I get Lamb in the comment like, yeah, they're, they're, they're taking me away. No, don't let that shit happen. Get C.D. Lamb the ball. Take the first half game plan and put it in the second half game plan. Uh, you you got to do better. And the, the, the targets are very high quality. They're all, almost always like last-minute throwaway, low passes under pressure stuff. Like, you got to get more going for Lamb in the second half of games. You're playing good teams now against the Lions. Got to get him involved in the second half. Have to. Now, the prize picks uh, more than, less than for CeeDee Lamb is 82.5 receiving yards. So will he get that? M for more, L for le less. Go vote in the comments of today's show. Next matchup to watch, the Cowboys' front against the Lions' run game. L Cowboys' run defense has been much better the past two weeks. This is a much tougher test they're about to face because the Lions don't just run the ball with a pretty good volume. They run the ball pretty efficiently, and they can get to the edges. I, I honestly, I really just, like from a pure football perspective, I really just enjoy watching the Lions' ground game concepts. Like, Ben Johnson is not stuck with just, like, a couple play calls. He gets very creative. He uses motion almost exactly half the time on run plays versus passing plays. He does a lot of good stuff. 
it is going to be a very, very challenging task for the Cowboys to stop that ground game. On the flip side, you like to get something similar to what you had last week out of Rico Dowdle. The ability to run the football when opposing teams dare you and to not be one-dimensional does still matter. I'm not saying become a team that goes run, run, pass every play. Please, God, don't. But you want to have some more play action? You want to make life easier on your offense in general? When, there's, when they start doing too high shell stuff and they're trying to you know, bracket and, and, and cloud up and, and flood the, the zones towards the, the, the area of CeeDee Lamb and stuff and like try to take him away, and they do that, that too high shell, too deep safety stuff, what a great way to, to, to do that is run the ball. Now, you haven't been very effective. Do some more uh, on that front. So there's more rushing yards in this game. C for the Cowboys, L for the Lions. Let me know in the comments of today's video. Number four is Chauncey Golston, the defensive end. And you're not going to have Micah. There's no Tank Lawrence. There's no Sam Williams. There's no Marshawn Neeland. The only defensive end who most people thought was going to be on this team is Chauncey Golston. That's the only man left. He is your best backup of your backups, backups that are playing. You're down to your fifth end. It's not a good spot to be. He's got to play well against Detroit. Now, got a hell of a matchup with Decker and Panay Sewell out there. <laughs> I am worried about how the Cowboys generate a pass rush, period, in this game. You might have to blitz more because Jared, when Jared Goff has time, he will light you up. He is great when there's no pressure. When things are on time, he is awesome. It's when he's not on time that things go badly. How are you going to get him off, off, off time? Someone's got to step on the passers. I'll start with Golston first and foremost there. Must be a shootout. Might be how you win this game. So Jake Ferguson, let's go, buddy. Hey, he's actually he's been fine this year. Don't get me wrong. Uh, missed, missed the game with the injury, so the, the per-game numbers are actually not bad at all. But he hasn't yet find, found a touchdown. And the Lions linebackers in particular, and it works more often than not, so you're, you're okay kind of playing by this double-edged sword. They're a pretty aggressive bunch. They, they will bite on play action. So you, you can hit some of those play-action shots. You know, maybe you hit a, a little seam shot to your tight end that you love to throw. Or the, the waggle stuff. Maybe do, maybe do kind of a deep crosser off the play-action backside to Ferguson. That stuff could work pretty well for you. Number two player to watch, Donovan Wilson. All right, bud. You've missed the tackles back-to-back -back weeks that are kind of big. You will be counted on. There's Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery. They're going to run the ball. Your safeties and your linebackers, too have to play well, especially with some injuries up front at the linebacker spot, not to mention the, the edges in, uh, overall. So, Wilson, you can be a physical tone setter. I need good Donovan Wilson. I don't think we've seen that yet this year. Number one, let's go right back to Jalen Tolbert. The answer is probably Dak Prescott. I don't want to pick Dak every week. That's, that's boring and lame, and you guys don't want to see that. Jalen Tolbert, though, do it again. I think you could, if you watch the sounds from the sideline, you could tell how much that catch meant to him. Like, it was, it, was, it was the culmination of, I am here, I have arrived, I have confidence. And then the quarterback could trust him to, to make the play, and good, good things happen. So, Tolbert, you are receiver two. Let's make some plays, baby. 